I'm going to ask you one question, and all I want is a yes or no answer. Do you want to live through this? In a screenplay written by Quentin Tarantino for only 1500 bucks, the movie begins with a Texan patrol car pulling up at an isolated liquor store. Officer McGraw visits the store often and talks to the shopkeeper Pete about a pair of bank robbers heard to be heading this way. He then goes to use the restroom when Seth appears with a hostage and points his gun at Pete. The Gecko brothers are the ones who performed the heist and have taken two hostages in their escape. They've been hiding in the store the whole time and told the shopkeeper to remain cool in front of the sheriff, but brother Richie insists to Seth that the scared man was giving McGraw signals. When the sheriff returns shortly after the two have slipped away, but when he goes to pay for his drink the nutjob Richie shoots him in the head point blank insisting that Pete did it again. The brothers begin to argue over how things are done, when Pete tries to defend himself but Richie shoots him in the shoulder. Deciding to let him live they attempt to leave but Pete retrieves his gun and shoots Richie through the hand and a massive shootout begins. The hostages escape while the shopkeeper continues to shout that he didn't signal the sheriff. Seth comes up with a plan for his brother to shoot the bottles behind Pete while he lights a toilet roll on fire and throws it behind the counter. Covered in fire Pete jumps up and continues to shoot back, but quickly succumbs to the flames and dies. They then return to their vehicle as the store explodes in stages behind them. On the drive to Mexico Richie tapes up the hole in his hand while a third hostage is shown to be bound in the trunk. After checking into a motel owned by a grumpy old-timer, who Seth threatens for his attitude. They take the distraught woman out of the trunk to bring her inside. The brothers discuss their plan to meet Seth's contact in Mexico who will offer them sanctuary and he promises Gloria that she will make it out alive if she follows orders. When Seth goes to get some food, Richie invites Gloria to join him on the bed to watch cartoons where he tells her to remove her shoes. A reporter speaks about the atrocities committed by the brothers and the large number of people they've killed, along with Richie being a sex offender. Seth returns to the motel with lunch for all of them including the hostage, but notices Richie's alone. He checks the bedroom to discover that Richie's done it again and brutally murdered Gloria after having his way with her. The disturbed brother scolds the mentally deranged Richie telling him that's not how they do things, and for now they need to find new hostages to get them across the border where they're meeting their contact the following morning. Meanwhile at a nearby diner, a minister named Jacob recently lost his faith so he's taken time off with his two kids to travel. When Scott goes to the bathroom his daughter Kate asks him if he still believes in God, which in the recent passing of Kate's mother he claims not enough to continue serving him. When the family check into a crappy motel they almost run over Seth wandering around the parking lot. Within minutes of being in their room, Jacob has a knock at the door from Richie asking for an ice bucket and the two brothers force their way inside. When Kate gets back from a swim she's taken hostage when Richie begins to hallucinate the pretty girl begging him for it. Knowing what his brothers like Seth sends the creepy foot lover to get the family's RV ready while he sends Kate to put on some clothes. They kidnap the family and make Jake drive them to Mexico, while Richie's told to shut up and put in his mouth guard to prevent grinding his teeth. The pastor tells Seth about his wife's car crash and agrees to get them across the border to assure his family's safety. Jake promises to kill Richie should he touch his daughter which Seth agrees with, but says that he will kill the whole lot of them should the family not hold up their end of the deal. The whole drive down to the border the depraved Richie spends it staring at Kate's feet, and when he tries to take up her imaginary offer to eat her out Seth tells him to shut up again. Once they reach the border, the two brothers hide with Kate in the bathroom while Scott tries to convince his father to spill the beans. Instead he tells his son to follow his lead and tries to convince customs agent Oscar that everything's fine, but Richie gets in one of his moods alerting the agent. Seth knocks Richie out but Oscar still checks the RV, finding only Kate pretending to be using it alone so the pervy man lets them through. Seth's over the moon with Jake's performance and directs him to take them to a bar to meet his contact, though he's never been there before he was told that you can't miss it. As the sun begins to set, they reach a side road leading to an illuminated bar in the middle of nowhere that you very clearly cannot miss called the Titty Twister. The doorman Chet stands out front inviting everyone inside with the promise of loose women for all. The family accompany the brothers inside after Seth's briefly stopped at the door by Chet but gives him a beatdown for wasting his time, followed up by some cheap shots by Richie. As you'd expect in a place named after a nipple, it features wall-to-wall -wall women stripping with the topless ones being cut from this for obvious reasons. They try to have a drink but Seth's told by the bartender Charlie to piss off as the place is only for bikers and truckers. So a fight almost breaks out between Seth and the bouncer but Jake calms the situation by showing his truck license and they all sit down for a drink, where Richie tells Scott that shots are on him and they all begin to relax a little. Around the room sits the truck driver Frost trying to enjoy Domino's in an unlikely place, while the aptly named Sex Machine is right where he ought to be and threatens another patron with his codpiece revolver. After a few more drinks Seth finally convinces Jake to join in, when Charlie introduces the star attraction that everyone's come here to see. 
exotic dancer Santanico Pandemonium begins to dance, and the house band who were just a few minutes ago going wild on stage begin to slow it down. The entire bar goes silent including the other dancers and they all stare astonished as she caresses an albino Burmese python. During the routine she singles out Richie, and as if knowing his fetish already, serves him beer run down her leg which she then finishes herself. She finally concludes her 4 minutes and 15 second routine which is all Selma Hayek improvising moves like this and I'm only talking right now to show you more of it. Just then Chet's regained consciousness and comes at the brothers with the bouncer that Seth already dislikes. When Richie pulls out a gun Charlie nails his already injured hand into the table but for some reason it's the bouncer that Seth shoots. Richie then pulls the knife out and uses it to stab bartender Charlie to death while the rest of the patrons just stand around. The brothers come out on top once again but while Seth attends to Richie's badly bleeding hand, Santanico reacts to it by transforming into a monstrous vampire and leaps on Richie's back. She bites into his neck before Seth can shoot her off him and the badly injured mental case bleeds out in his brother's arms. Suddenly the dead begin to rise up, revealing everyone who works there including the dancers to also be vampires. One locks the door and they all begin to feed on the bar patrons, with Sex Machine putting his pistol to good use. Frost manages to kill his dancer with the blunt leg of a table, then proceeds to kill another three vamps just like her. When Chet tries to go at Kate, she sticks her cross down his throat causing him to melt and blow all over her. SM turns out to be a natural as he builds up a pile of dead undead women, then when Charlie attempts to come at him he uses his whip and a stake to easily destroy him. Seth's caught back up to by Santanico who knocks him to the ground and begins to talk about how she's going to make him her slave, but he uses his pistol to shoot the chandelier and it falls on top of her. As she melts away the survivors finish off the last few vampires, including whatever this thing is that dies simply by being kneecapped and choked. Big Emilio attempts to go at the group but Frost rips his heart clean out with his bare hand, then noticing it's still beating the bouncer is defeated with a simple pencil. With none left except for Tito and the Tarantula who have been playing the entire massacre on their corpse instruments, Machine and Frost try to kill them but they disappear in a cloud of smoke. While the main group attempts to remove the entrance's barricade Seth finds his brother's body and says his final farewells. Before he can finish Richie turns into a vampire but doesn't attack instead just acts confused. Seth doesn't let anyone else kill him and instead decides that he must be the one to do it himself. While the group hold him Seth tearfully plunges a stake through his brother's heart and he melts away. He begins to drink heavily despite what anyone else tells him and they begin to hear a swarm of bats surrounding the twister. One of the dead patrons comes back to life as a vampire and attacks Kate, but she's saved by Sex Machine. Realizing they're all going to come back, the team begin preemptively killing them all before they can reanimate, while Jacob plugs holes in the bar windows with body parts. During the massacre of the massacred, one of the newly minted vamps bites SM on his arm but he kills it and chooses to hide it from the others. The survivors regroup and discuss the ways to kill vampires that they've heard on TV, noting that they're strong but have soft bodies able to have things easily pushed through it. Frost begins his speech on how things were so much worse back in Vietnam, when Sexy begins to hear whispers in his head. As the animated Frost describes in vivid detail how he stuck an entire VC squad in their sleep, SM watches on slowly transforming part by part, then sneaks up behind Frost and bites him in the neck. He then bites Jacob in the arm and throws him into the bar, then proceeds to knock every one of the surviving group away as they try to rush him. When he charges at his old friend Frost throws him through a window, letting in a swarm of vampire bats as Frost quickly makes his transformation in minutes. Seth and the kids run away and lock themselves in a back room of the bar as the preacher is shown to still be alive. He bandages his arm and uses a baseball bat and a shotgun as a cross to hold back the swarm of vampires who now all look like Richie's personality. With the occasional blast when they get too excited, Jacob makes his way back to the remaining group to reunite with his children who thought him dead. With him bitten they know he'll turn within the hour so they then prepare to make a last stand against the remaining vampires. Inside the storeroom they find supplies that the vamps have been amassing from the truckies and begin to search for weapons. Seth makes an automatic stake out of a jackhammer, Kate finds a crossbow, Scott fills a water gun and condoms with holy water and the team prepare for battle. Before they make their charge, Jacob forces his children to promise they'll kill him when he turns into a vampire, threatening to shoot himself right now should they not agree. They use the cross gun to force the horde back into the bar and begin their attack. During the fight as the four vampire hunters slaughter dozens of creatures with their on-hand devices, Seth's attacked by Sex Machine but uses SM's own whip to pull his head off, then crossbow wielding Kate puts a bolt into his eye. This doesn't stop him though as his body transforms into a giant rat-like creature and attacks Seth almost killing him, until Kate puts a bolt into his second head allowing Seth to kick it into a fire to be blown up by a third. The monstrous looking Frost then confronts Jake but the holy man puts his instrument of God through the creature's stomach and begins shooting vamps through it, then when he pulls it out Frost just melts. 
When Jake then runs out of bullets the beast just back away, as he's fully transformed. He attacks his son biting him in the neck leaving him compromised. So Scott melts half his father's face away with a holy condom. Then using the pistol loaded with bullets blessed by the man himself, he blows Jake's head clean off with a single shot but is instantly swarmed by vampires. Kate goes to shoot the attackers but her brother begs her to kill him instead, which she does by blowing him and the surrounding vampires to pieces with the holy relic. Now with only Seth and Kate remaining and completely outnumbered, all is lost so she suggests they use the last bullets on themselves. When they notice the rays of sunlight leaking inside are hurting the vampires, they decide to use the last few bullets to create more light instead but it isn't enough. Suddenly they hear banging on the door, as the Gecko brothers contacts shown up for their morning meeting like he promised. His men blast their way through and the two survivors run outside while the sunlight hits a disco ball hanging from the ceiling. It reflects dozens of beams around the bar and the vampires begin exploding, until eventually the entire titty twister itself goes up in flames. Outside Seth immediately punches his contact for leading him to a place full of vampires, but Carlos admits he's never been there before and just drove past it a couple of times. He thought it looked like a good place to meet since it's open from dusk till dawn and is in the middle of nowhere. Seth renegotiates with Carlos to pay only 25% from the brother's original heist instead of the usual 30, and's given a sports car for his troubles. He gives Kate some money and apologizes for her family when she asks if he wants some company where he's going, but he tells her to go home to protect her from his dangerous lifestyle. He drives away and Kate takes the RV and leaves, when the camera zooms out to reveal that the titty twister is just the nipple to the boob that is an ancient Aztec pyramid known as a ziggurat. And the movie ends. You touch my brother with that steak, biker, and vampires aren't gonna have to suck your blood, they'll be able to lick it up off the floor. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks.